Hello people, Watchman Blows the Horn here, and I'm blowing the horn as loudly as I can to let people know what time it is so they know what they ought to be doing. Welcome to the ninth installment of this analysis of the iPad 2012 iPad Go 2 animation. In uh, the last installment, we um, saw how the uh, gentleman went surfing with his uh, pet goat Pismo, pointing us once again to this year and this season in particular as the time when most of the events depicted in the animation iPad Go 2 will find manifestation. In this installment, we start off with this character. And according to Heliophant, this character is called Ali. And this is what is written about Ali in, uh, on their website. The Ali, the whirling heart of Islam, awakened to the one true God. He is free and needs no control. So, this boy depicts Islam, and he has a head wound and is lying dead. However, on his face is the scar beetle, which represents resurrection. So, I think this is saying to us that at this point in time, Islam is still pretty much dormant. It's not what it was in the you know centuries ago however it's telling us that the time of its resurrection is close and this just brings to my mind this verse and i saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. Revelation 13 verse 3. So, this verse is speaking of the beast who was dead had a head wound. One of, one of his heads had a head wound and ha is now brought back to life and the whole world wandered after this beast. And I believe this is speaking of Islam, as stated by the creators of the animation. So, the scar beetle. The Egyptians saw the Egyptian scarab, Scarabius Caesar, as a symbol of renewal and rebirth. You see the connection? So this little boy and this, with the scarab beetle on his face is being connected to, to the phoenix and the rising of the phoenix. Rebirth. The lotus. You see the connection? So as a symbol of renewal and rebirth, the connection between the beetle and the sun was so close that the young sun god, see the connection again? Who is the sun god? Apollo who is the beast that rises out of the abyss, Apollyon, Abaddon. So, the young sun god was thought to be reborn in the form of a winged scarab beetle every morning at sunrise. So, the beasts as described by Daniel in Daniel chapter 7, Babylon, Assyria, Medo-Persia, Greco-Roman, and the final beast, Islam. Of course, in its first manifestation, it um, existed and then it died a natural death. The Ottoman Empire pretty much died after the second, oh, sorry, the the First World War. So, the beast
beasts as described in Revelation 13, basically telling us that this beast system is created by the same spirit over and over again, over and over again. The idea of the phoenix. So, the heads. Well, there is a hidden head, which is Elam, which is where it all started. Genesis. That's the reason why the Lord says in uh, Jeremiah forty nine, I think, or thirty nine, forty nine, I think, where He says that He will set His throne in Elam when He returns. The reason is because that is where the original throne of the anti child was set the original throne of the original son of perdition, Cain, who was driven out of the garden and went eastward to the land of Nod, which is modern day, which is Elam, the part of Iran that is called Elam. So that was the hidden head, Susa, the lotus, the source of the anti-figure. And then you had the Babylonian Assyrian head and then the Medo Persian head and then the Greco-Roman head and then the fourth beast the Islamic Caliphate the one that suffered a wound and is now in the process of being resurrected as we can see with the liberation and in inverted commas of Afghanistan, which constitutes the major geographical area where the army of the Mahdi will emerge, Khorasan. So these are the, world, the beast world systems over time. And it is out of this beast that the ten horns of the end times will emerge. And Yeshua will pluck out three of those horns. And then the little horn, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, will emerge. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as at yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Revelation 17 verses 12 to 14. So, the resurrected Islamic beast system, out of which will rise the little horn, the Antichrist. The original son of perdition, the son of Satan, the serpent, Cain reborn, Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3. The beast that thou sowest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, thank goodness, after the elect have been raptured, and go into perdition, destruction. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Revelation 17, verse 8. So, the resurrection of the beast now we move to this scene. And the way we know that most of the events depicted in Iper Goat are speaking of our times is by looking at the headlines. So here we have this little girl who has been abused. She even has a scar on her arm. She's marked. She's been dehumanized. So you have this idea of her being robotic because she has just basically been dehumanized by this gentleman on the left. 
with the skull and bones tattoo, which symbolizes that he is a member of a secret cult. And she has been given an AK-47, which means that she is a child soldier. Of course, they're both of African origin. And he is unwrapping this gift. She is a gift that he is unwrapping. Her hollow eyes depicting the lack of life as she has been traumatized and dehumanized. So is there anything in the headlines today that points us to this, the um, meaning of this scene? UNICEF, children recruited by armed forces, thousands of boys and girls are used as soldiers, cooks, spies, and more in armed conflict around the world. UNICEF report, 27th of August, 2021. Child soldiers. Thousands of children are recruited and used in armed conflict across the world between 2005 and 2020. More than 93,000 children were verified as recruited, so abducted children and recruited and used by parties to conflict, although the actual number of cases is believed to be much higher. So, they built us from the ground up into killing machines. You see the reference? How the little girl looks like a machine? Because that's what they do to these child soldiers. You see her with the AK-47? And this is a quote from the movie Lord of War. Andre, I can see what you are thinking, but we need every man we can get. Yuri, even if they're not men. Andre, a bullet from a 14-year-old is just as effective as one from a 40-year-old. Often more effective. Lord of War. Child soldiers. Now we move to this scene. Juan Petito. And it says, after years of economic exploitation and the environmental degradation, Juan Petito has a decidedly sinking feeling. So, is there anything in the headlines of today that might shed light on this scene? Note he has a tattoo on his arm. Juanita. The female version of his name, Juan. So who is this Pepito character? Now consider this. Pepito, as a boy's name, is a Hebrew name and the name Pepito means Jehovah increases. Pepito is a variant form of Jose, Spanish Hebrew, variant spelling of Joseph. So Pepito is Joseph. It's the same name as Joseph. So it's really interesting how we have this situation that occurred a few weeks ago touched the world. Who is Gabby Petito's dad? Joseph. So Gabby Petito, the woman who was killed recently, her father's name is Joseph, which is the same as Pepito. So, Pepito, 
which is the same as Joseph, and the father of Gabi called Joseph Tetito. See the link? Joseph Petito is Gabi Petito's dad. So this scene is directly speaking of the situation with Gabi Pepito. When did Gabi Petito go missing? Gabi was last seen on August 24th, 2021, checking out of a hotel with her fiancé, Brian Laurie, Laudry, in Salt Lake City, Utah. FBI is now looking for Gabi Petito's missing fiancé, Brian Laundry. So, Laundry returned home to Northport, uh, Florida on September the 1st without Petito, police said. Petito's parents reported her disappearance on September the 11th. Connection? Considering iPad go to start off with the scene about events on September the 11th. And then the way Gabby Petito's fiancé, Brian Laundry has evaded arrest, epitomizes white privilege. And this article that was posted on the 20th of September. So now this links us to white privilege. The fact that not everyone is treated in the same way. The search for Brian Laundry, whose fiancé, Gabriella Petito went missing under the most suspicious and tragic of circumstances, embodies white privilege in every way, fashion, and form. Amid search for Gabrielle Petito, imagine if mainstream media covered missing black women and girls as extensively. Black Lives Matter. Do you see the link? So this abduction of Gabriella Petito is being linked here to the abduction of black girls. And what is this girl in the picture? An abducted black girl. Do you see the link? The creators of iPad, Co iPad Go 2 are telling us that the events they are depicting occur in this season. So, the link of the abduction of Gabriella Petito to the fact that the abduction of black women is not taken or black girls or black women is not taken as seriously. Petito's dad gives same attention to all missing people. The family of slain traveller Gabby Petito has implored the public and news media to put the same energy into helping find other missing people as they did Petito, a 22-year-old woman who vanished on a cross-country trip with her boyfriend. You see the link? Gabby Petito's father gives message to women in toxic relationships at daughter's funeral. If there is a relationship that you're in that might not be the best thing for you, leave it now. Published Monday, 27th of September, 2021. And incidentally, International Day of the Girl Child was on the 11th of October. The International Day of the Girl Child, Gabi, that 
Tito. Juan Pepito. Joseph Petito. The black girls abducted. What are the odds that these stories would be published within a month? What do you think the authors of iPad Go 2 are trying to convey? Now we move on to this scene. As we see tanks rolling in, of course it's still winter, telling us the timing of when this is occurring. And we see the woman with a white flag. Of course, this is a direct reference to the Tiananmen Square Massacre. So, is there anything in the headlines today that gives us an idea of what this is referring to? Well, Hong Kong University to remove pillar of shame, Tiananmen Square sculpture, published 9th October. 2021. You see the link? The University of Hong Kong will remove the famous pillar of shame sculpture um, mem memorializing victims of the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre from its campus, a letter written by its legal team said Friday. The letter came from Mayor Brown, LLP, a US-based international law firm acting on behalf of the university, and stated the statue had to be removed before 5 p.m. on the 13th October 2021, or it would be deemed abandoned and dealt with in such a manner that the university sees fit. It was addressed to leaders of the Hong Kong Alliance in support of patriotic democratic movement of China, a pro-democracy organization established during the Tiananmen Square protests, which was given the sculpture on permanent loan in 1997. After several of its senior members were arrested under Hong Kong's national security law, the alliance announced a decision to disband last month and is now in the liquidation process. The sculpture, which stands atop a podium in the Hacking Wong building of the university, is part of a series of works by Danish actor Jens Galsheim created in 1997 to pay tribute to the victims of the Tiananmen Square crackdown, in which the Chinese military crushed protests led by college students in Beijing with deadly force. The sculpture serves as a warning and a reminder to people of a shameful event which must never reoccur according to the description on Gaoshire's website. Gaoshire gave the sculpture to Albert Hu and Li Chek Yang, both of whom were involved in the Tiananmen Square protest and have served as leaders of the alliance. On Monday, Gaoshire told CNN he is considering legal action if the statue is removed, as the work is still his property. They've given them five days to remove the sculpture. It's not possible. A lot of students are in jail. This is really crazy and unfair. 
I have an agreement with the university for the permanent exhibition of this sculpture, he said. This is a big statement from the Chinese government. If they remove it, it's the only monument remembering the Tiananmen crackdown. Morally, it's a big problem. So, would you say that's a direct link to this scene? Now, this lady waving the white flag is tapped on her shoulder. It, it looks to me like she's trying to play a role to stop this conflict. Because this is basically um, a throwback to, there's a reference to the tensions with Taiwan. So the creators of iPad Go 2 are referencing this Tiananmen Square incident, linking it to the headline with the sculpture being removed. But ultimately, they're talking about the Taiwan incident and the fact that perhaps the same thing that happened in Taiwan is about to happen in Hong Kong, I mean, in Tiananmen Square, is about to happen in Taiwan. So this character waving the white flag is probably trying to intervene to act as a peace envoy. And she's tapped by this other character. She's tapped on the shoulder. Now, who is this character? Well, she has um, the embroidery of a uh, tiger on, on her jacket. And the funny thing is, um, uh, courtesy Jacko of um, Roadmap to the End, we can see this female with a tiger tattooed on her back. And this is none other than Angelina Jolie. Interestingly enough, Angelina, Angelina Jolie is on this cover, this 2019 cover, Mona Angelina, with a head covering. Perhaps a reference to her role as the uh, refugee, the N UN envoy to the refugees. A role which she was given, I think, in 2014, I think, 2012, not sure. So... UNHCR envoy. Could it be that with the escalation of tensions between the United States and China over Taiwan, the UN might send Angelina Jolie on a special mission asking her to perhaps intervene? And she turns around to um, observe who has tapped her on the shoulder, only to see death, the figure, death, skullduggery. So what is this referring to? You see, this... I believe is referring to the Day of the Dead celebrations, which takes place on the 1st and 2nd of November. Day of the Dead. So, the Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday celebrated in Mexico and elsewhere associated with the Catholic celebrations of All Saints Day and, and All Souls Day and is held on the 1st and 2nd of November. The multi-day holiday involves family and friends gathering to pray for and to remember friends and family members who have died. So, I think this is telling us the timing as to when Angelina Jolie might try to play this role to try and douse the tensions. But from the scene, it doesn't look like she will be successful as it looks like she comes to the realization that war is inevitable. And she looks disappointed. 
of course, according to contemporary um, economic analysis and military analysis, conflict is inevitable. Because the process starts with trade imbalances. It starts with people living beyond their means and taking on debt. Babylon, USA. Wages become distorted, production costs escalate, and industries move offshore. The result? Trade deficits and an unsustainable national debt. Sound like Babylon, USA? Shipped all her manufacturing to China. Of course, this leads to a financial crisis. When debt levels reach the tipping points, the financial system suddenly and dramatically destabilizes. Companies and individuals can no longer borrow money, bankruptcies, and unemployment soar, which leads to currency war. Politicians seek to cheat economic laws, governments print money to pay debts and devalue their currency. Sounds like what's happening in the USA, which temporarily promotes exports and discourages imports. Those who devalue first gain the most. And this takes us to trade wars. As they work to steal trade from each other, governments enact tariffs, taxes, and subsidies. Global trade plunges, exacerbating the financial crisis, unemployment rises, politicians again devalue currencies and enact more radical populist measures. Now, the trade wars and embargoes on products. Um... This study here reveals to us the parallels between what happened with uh, Japan in the ninth, in 1941 and what's happening with China in 2021. So you have country A, okay? So X is the vital resource not controlled by country A. So the resource is not controlled by country A. Now, in the case of Japan, in the 1940s, it was oil. And um, country B controls supply of X. So in the case of the 1940s, the US controlled 80% of Japanese oil imports. Now, failed technological workaround. So... Japan tried to create synthetic oil from coal, and they failed in production. Now, country B's embargo. Okay, so country B, who controls the vital resource X, carries out an embargo. So Roosevelt embargo on gasoline and seizure of Japanese assets. So, country C, a supplier of X close to country A. So, of course, country A looks for an alternative. So in this case, it was the Dutch East Indies and Malaysia, which were country C's, close to country A. So what would country A's response be? Well, Japan invaded Southeast Asia to take over oil fields. So likewise, 2021, the vital resource, semiconductors. Country B, control supply of the vital resource. USA, 100% of key chips. And these chips are vital to the manufacturing of most of the products that the Chinese manufacture. Failed technological workaround. So China has tried multiple times and failed. Multiple failures of Chinese chip manufacturing initiatives. So, country B places an embargo because of the trade wars. US embargo on chips and chip manufacturing equipment using American technology. And that's the reason why we have a shortage of chips, which is affecting the production of many of the products that are churned out by the Chinese. So this is a direct threat to the success, the economic success story of the Chinese. So 
country C, a supplier of the vital resource X, which is close to country A. Country A here is China. Country C is Taiwan. They have chips and cheap manufacturing technology. So, country A's response. What do you think country A's response will be? What do you think China's response will be in light of this study? Well, the final stage is hot war. Like currency wars, first mover advantage goes to those who unexpectedly strike first. So, on the Economist magazine covers, they've been telegraphing all these events. You can see the volcanic eruptions. You can see the you can see the reference to swine flu. You can see the reference to the earth getting hotter and and the ice caps melting. You can see the reference to a foreign body approaching the earth. You can see the reference to the bird losses. You can see the reference reference to the increase in um, pestilences. And then you see the gentleman and his wife both sitting on the couch with their son and even the, the, the uh, cat has got a gas mask on. And what this is saying is this is not the normal COVID mask. This is the this is more of the kind of gas mask you use when you've had a nuclear detonation. So we have we have the um, coronal mass ejection, okay, before we finally have the nuclear detonation. So. Coronal mass ejection, geomagnetic storm warning, solar flare may directly hit Earth today, can disrupt power grids, October 11th, 2021. Interesting, isn't it? A massive solar flare was observed from the side of the sun that directly faces Earth on October 9th and is due to hit Earth today. This was an article written on the uh, 11th of October. U.S. Agency National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, has issued a geomagnetic storm alert with a solar flare due to directly hit Earth today on October the 11th, 2021. So you see, there is going to be a solar storm that will affect the Earth. It will knock out communications. It will knock out many electronics. You see, the reason is because God wants to eliminate all the distractions from Draco he wants to free Lukovid. Lukovid. He wants to free us from the distractions created by Draco. And that's what this solar flare will do. It will knock off the TVs and the phones and the laptops and the and the iPads, and, and it will basically just cause all the distractions to fade away. And Draco will flee as Ludovic will no longer have any distractions. You see, because it is at this time that the Lord wants us to look up. This is the time when the latter rain will occur, when the Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber 
and the bride out of her closet, Joel 2 verses 15 and 16. This is when darkness will cover the earth. And it is when this darkness covers the earth that the Lord will pour out his power, his spirit upon all flesh. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, Joel 2 verse 28, and also upon servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, Joel 2 verse 29. Ludovic will be freed to look up. And there shall be signs in the sun at this time, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, Luke 21 verse 25, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, fire, the fires that are burning all over, pillars of smoke, volcanic eruptions, yeah, at this point in time they will intensify and the Lord tells us when we see these things we ought to look up so this is bringing us into Hanukkah when on the 4th of December we will have the total solar eclipse and it is at the point where we have this total solar eclipse that we shall see the first glimpses of the fiery red dragon. So you can see here, 14th of December total solar eclipse. You can see where the fiery red dragon is. Its effects on the earth will be much more severe from this point. And that's the first point where we will see. And of course, the earth will be plunged into darkness. And just before the solar eclipse, House approves extension of debt ceiling into December. Democrats grapple with how to set a new ceiling for U.S. debt later this year over Republican resistance. The December 3rd deadline for raising the debt ceiling coincides with the deadline for passing legislation to avoid a partial government shutdown. October the 12th, 2021. Whatever happens on that day, one thing is sure is it will increase the prospect of darkness upon the earth. It will not go well. I suspect the ceiling will be raised, no money will be printed, which will just cause a total loss in the confidence in the dollar. And that is why even Vladimir, Vladimir Putin has warned. So Putin warns US may regret using dollar as sanctions weapon. Also for printing, arbitrarily printing the dollar. If they keep printing the dollar other countries will have no choice but to abandon the use of the dollar. So this 
deadline happens a day before the total solar eclipse, which I believe is a harbinger. Because on that day, to the left hand side and top corner of the sun during the eclipse for keen observers they will see the fiery red dragon and this is what is re referenced in the title of this animation heliophant with the dot on the eye moving slightly to the right it's a reference to the 4th of December total solar eclipse men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken shaken Luke 21 verse 26 and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. That's the reason why the Lord will take away all distractions, so we can look up. Look up, lift your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Luke 21 verse 28. December 4th, 2021, solar eclipse. And this is the view above the horizon at 6.59 a.m. on December 4th. Although you will not be able to see the fiery red dragon, only those who can observe the um, eclipse will be able to spot the fiery red dragon and under the horizon we will have the um, constellation Sagittarius, Capricornus and Aquila of course Aquila is um, the constellation from where the fiery red dragon emerges and then at this point Jupiter will be in between the constellations Capricorn and Aquarius so after this solar flare event will come at a later date nuclear detonation the death card the red horse the black horse the pale horse all wrapped in one and this is what they've been projecting for a very long time. Who will go nuclear next? UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warns the world is on the brink of nuclear annihilation. China reconsider. The global appeal for peace comes as a top Chinese diplomat warned his country to re-examine their promise to only use nukes in retaliation in response to the new alliances forming in the region. So, as we can see on the cover of the Economist magazine, the panda representing China, not looking too happy. China, the angry panda, and her allies will ignite World War III. And I suspect Babylon USA will be hit unexpectedly. Babylon will be destroyed, deliver thyself. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off, 
the fear of her torment, for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. You think there's scarcity now? Then the black horse will really ride. As we're being told in this Economist magazine cover, the shortage economy. When the wars break out, the shortages will increase exponentially. And of course, then we see this character carrying on with his emergence as he and his angels orchestrate the destruction in the world. Thank you for sticking with me through to the end of this installment. We shall carry on at the next installment. I remain your faithful watchman, standing on the wall, blowing the horn as loudly as I can, and I'm out.